Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and co-creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and in this video I want to talk about signs that no contact is working but for each different attachment style. One of the things that is like so tough sometimes for me to watch is that there are amazing really talented people um, who are dating or relationship coaches or therapists or people on the internet who are sharing you know, really valuable principles and information, but sometimes they're not taking into consideration the way that different attachment styles respond. So they're sort of putting this like umbrella, sort of like everything falls under this umbrella sort of stamp on everything. And the truth is that different attachment styles respond very differently to things like no contact, for example. And without taking that into consideration, sometimes it's a little bit of misinformation, even though the principles you know, that, that govern it are, are correct in a lot of ways, like the sort of signs and, and patterns behind co no contact and why it can work in certain situations can be really useful. But if we don't take into consideration how different attachment styles process breakups and how they have different time frames from which no contact will affect them, then it's only giving us half of the puzzle, if that makes sense. So I'm not saying that to be, um, you know, negative or against anything that anybody's putting out there. There's a ton of amazing information on the internet. And I personally am always learning and growing and I listen to new things every day and I learn from other people all the time. But I just want everybody to be clear about things like, you know, how people process a breakup and how people respond to no contact because it's quite common that people are so frustrated that these things aren't working for them and they don't realize that, oh, it's because my partner is a dismissive avoidant attachment style or because they're anxious. And so I'm going to touch on in this video some signs that no contact is working for each attachment style, and also a little bit about what time frame works best for different attachment styles and why, okay? So before I dive into this content, I just wanna let you guys know that I'm gonna to try to make a daily video as much as possible, either related to COVID-19 or just related to helping you guys and, and sharing um, content that's empowering and useful for you during this time. I know it's not easy. But I'm here with you guys and I'm supporting you. And if you have any questions or comments um, or want me to make any specific content, I will be making videos a lot more than usual. So please keep me posted. Let me know. And also to support our community, we're offering 25% um, off sales for anybody who wants to purchase bundles of membership. So if you want to come in for three months, six months, this is an amazing time to work on yourself. Like so much of what we want to approach this quarantine time um, with the attitude of is like, what can we take away from this? And there really isn't a better time to be like, oh, I'm going to buckle down and work on myself and learn about myself and be in relationship to myself and meditate and journal and do these self-connection activities and the workbooks if you join the school and join our amazing community. We have a beautiful community of people who are so supportive. And if you're struggling at all financially during this time, um, because you were laid off work or anything like that, you can just reach out to us directly at um, info at personaldevelopmentschool.com. And we're offering scholarships for people who are struggling or in a tough spot. So please, like we're here to support you. And I highly recommend that you take advantage of this opportunity so you can look back on this period of time in your life and be like, oh, you know, I took something away from that. That was a really hard time, but I took something from it. So I'm here to support you as much as possible in helping to make that happen, no matter what that sort of looks like. So please feel free to reach out. I have an amazing team who's organizing all of this and, and is also help, happy to help during this time. So let's go into the content for today. So first and foremost, sometimes people forget that principles of no contact apply very differently to different attachment styles, or some people don't know about attachment styles, so they just don't know. And, you know, we can't say even here with different attachment styles that one size fits all, but we can say that there are significantly greater patterns around how um, different attachment styles do respond to no contact that are way more dialed in than just how everybody responds to no contact. So it's really important to take this into consideration. Now, the reason that no contact can be helpful is that, people, is that people commonly doubt or question their decision to break up. And by the way, if anybody's not familiar with what no contact is, essentially in a very short version, it's this, this concept or idea that it's important to just take complete space and not reach out and not communicate with an ex right after a breakup. And this is sort of why. It's that people often, when they leave a relationship, especially if it's a bit longer term relationship, they can often have a lot of feelings of doubt or uncertainty or like, oh my gosh, should I do the right thing? Or 
you know, they feel lonely or they feel sad or they miss you, you know, no matter what, if there's a long-term relationship, all of us, even if you're the one doing the breaking up, feel some kind of detachment and that causes pain and that pain often makes individuals question or even regret their decisions. And so no contact leaves that space for the person to experience that sort of doubt and, and uncertainty. And that's usually when people will sort of get to reflect and wonder, like, did I do the right thing? Now, one thing I really want to point out is that this is specifically useful right after a breakup. Because if, if this is like way after a breakup and you've been in touch in the meantime, or if the timing of this is off, um, then it's not really going to have much use in the first place. And secondly, if the timing is off for the attachment style that you're breaking up with, then it's also not, not going to have a whole lot of impact. So here's a couple things I want to mention about no contact before I go into the signs that it's not, or the signs that it is working. So um, I've done other videos on my channel if you want to do a deeper dive into this, but it's about how different attachment styles process a breakup. So for example, the anxious preoccupied attachment style generally feels a lot of the sting and the pain and the treachery of the breakup right away, very immediately, like the day after they're suffering, you know, and that's ongoing for usually the first two months and then they sort of start to turn a corner. And it doesn't mean that they don't have things left to work through and work on, but often that's when they start to experience relief. So for example, if you're doing like, you know, no contact for the first, people say often 30 days, but sometimes people say do 60 days. Like if you're doing no contact, for example, for that prolonged period of time, or if you have an attachment style where like you have somebody who's anxious and you're doing no contact for the first 30 days, but they work so hard on themselves for that 30 days, that anxious ex, and then they've turned part of a corner in 30 days, they're a lot less willing to turn around and be interested in like what you have to say or rekindling a potential romance. And your window gets really short because usually at the two month mark, they're sort of quite ready to move on. And anxious preoccupied tend to process a lot quicker. Now, sometimes if anxious preoccupied have like a very strong core wound um, around abandonment or they were, um, adopted as children or there, there's like a, a parent, one of the parents left, sometimes they can actually have a really prolonged response to a breakup that can last for about a year to a year and a half and they can feel like they're sort of in this freeze mode and that's not uncommon. And if that's the case for the anxious person, obviously their window is a lot longer, but that's also a really important sign if you are that anxious person to work on yourself because you don't want to feel like you're just going back into relationships to get out of a freeze state, which is basically a trauma response to alleviate that pain. Okay, so going back to this, um, if so, so the anxious preoccupied tend to have like this shorter window, okay? And if you do no contact and then you try to turn that corner way later, you try to come back and connect to them way later, then they're less likely to be emotionally available during that time, okay? Even if, the, remember, this is even if the anxious, this is if specifically the anxious person is the one doing the breaking up. And in that case too, it's probably even shorter for two months when they're processing the breakup because even though they might be, you know, reconsidering and missing and, you know, if they did the breakup, they're already likely moved on to a certain degree for certain reasons. Now, I want to put one other thing out here that's really important. There's so much I want to say. Maybe I'll make some more videos about this. If you guys want, let me know in the comments below and I can sort of split up some of this content and do deeper dives because there is a lot to say here. But also, no contact shouldn't apply to a relationship that's a long-term relationship that's like more than a year and a half, okay, up to, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. It shouldn't apply to a long-term relationship where you broke up because of a fight, because somebody drank too much and said the wrong thing, or somebody just had a loss in the family, like a death or an illness, and somebody's under tremendous distress, and then they flip out and they say, oh, you know, I don't want this anymore, or they lose their job, and they, you know, the, this isn't a no contact problem at this point. This isn't a like, oh, there's an emotional fight and somebody says the wrong thing and pushes the other person away and you don't reconcile. Those things you talk out. And, and that needs to be another distinction that's made because a lot of people get into this, you know, I think of that old movie with Jennifer Aniston and um, I think his name is Vince Vaughn, I forget. I think that's his name. And um, it's called The Breakup. And you see like both of them hurting and wanting to reconnect. And it's just this like slow unwinding of everybody making the wrong moves step by step by step in the relationship. And if if there's a bad argument or there's a uh, something poor that happens, before just like taking that at face value and leaving, you know, you should try to communicate because communication is key and it's, it's an, an important ingredient in any relationship. So 
Um, but let's say this is somebody like literally sitting down and they've thought it out and they try to sort of go through the breakup. So we've got the anxious out of the way. So no contact, you want to be a much shorter period of time. I would say the peak that the anxious is feeling it is between two to three weeks. So if you're going to do something, you know, go no contact for a week or two weeks and then, you know, open the conversation and the dialogue again, because they will start to really, really process and then try to move on. Okay. If you're dealing with somebody who is um, fearful avoidant, usually their points of processing a relationship and starting to really feel their feelings is it can start creeping in around three weeks, but usually you're looking at like four to six weeks, um, four to eight weeks. They can be a little bit more um, inconsistent with their timing because they, um, they have both sides. So it's like if you're a fearful avoidant leaning anxious or a fearful avoidant leaning dismissive, that's going to impact the person's time frame, right? But generally, you're looking at like you no contact for the first three weeks to four weeks. Like if you want to do the solid 30 days, no contact, that's actually a pretty good thing for fearful avoidance specifically. Okay. Sometimes even up to five or six weeks is a good time to before like reinstating and trying to reach out and communicate. Okay. Now keep in mind here too, like when we're doing this and we're talking about these things, I hope you that you're not chasing a relationship from somebody that isn't treating you fairly. So please try to take that into consideration. Be fair to yourself, check in with yourself during this process. If you're just chasing somebody to get rid of the sting of the loss of the relationship, then you're not being fair to yourself. So make sure that you're doing this because you have different tools, you have different awareness, you wanna try different things, you think you can grow and you think that this person will be on board to, to um, take a chance at working this out. And at least you think there's a good chance that you're, you're willing to try, okay? Now, dismissive avoidance. No contact for, for a month. For dismissive avoidance isn't really gonna work because dismissive avoidance don't usually start even feeling the tips of their feelings of processing a loss of a relationship until six weeks to up to three to four months. So really no contact with dismissive avoidance, you wanna extend that window quite a bit longer. So you wanna do no contact for six weeks if you can, or for five weeks, you know, you sort of wanna hit that like point just before they start to really process you, you start reaching back out or just after, like somewhere in that window. So a safe bet is to do no contact for six weeks with one person, with a dismissive. And then if you look at the anxious, it's like a week to two weeks. And so I really wanna just put this into juxtaposition because our time frames can be off. And if we miss the time frame, then we miss the boat on the relationship, okay? So there's a lot more I can say about this and I will do more videos in detail about this if you guys are interested. But now I'm gonna get into the signs that no contact is working. So number one, with the anxious or fearful avoidant ex, some really good signs. That person reaches out to you after they've broken up and they go, oh, how are you? How are you doing? They might be pretending like they're checking on you, but usually they're checking on like, is there anything here? You know, most people, it's a little bit uncomfortable to reach out and just try to be friendly right away. There are some people that this happens to, but I would say a lot more of the time, if somebody's reaching out to you after breaking up, when you've gone no contact, then um, they're missing you a little bit and they're questioning their decisions and they're basically trying to, you know, dip their foot in the pool or in the waters and sort of get their feet wet and see what's going on. So that's one. Also with anxious and fearful avoidant, especially anxious, um, if they, if you guys are active on social media, which a lot of people are, like they post a ton on social media, especially anxious, um, like extra pictures. Um, maybe they comment on like your friends' things, especially anxious, um, your family's things, they're commenting on their posts. They're trying to show up in your radar. So if they've broken up and then you go no contact and they're doing this, they're trying to like show up and, and, and like get to you in some way, not necessarily in like a creepy way, but they're trying to sort of like be in the same space and have some kind of bond or connection still there. Um, anxious preoccupied as well. Sometimes they'll go to places that you said you would go together and then post these things on social media. Sometimes people will try to rebound. More fearful avoidance will try to like rebound, even though often it takes them a little bit. It's not uncommon. They try to rebound and then post these things somewhere because um, fearful avoidance often act out of spite. And it sounds funny, but spirit, you know, spitefulness is often a subconscious strategy for emotional connection because it's like if I'm feeling pain and I can make you feel pain at least we're feeling the same pain and we're kind of on the same wavelength and there's an opportunity potentially for connection and so sometimes if they're hurting they'll try to do spiteful things and that's definitely a sign that somebody is not over the relationship why because the opposite of love isn't hate it's indifference 
hate means there's still a lot of care and emotion behind a situation. So I'm sure you guys have heard that before, but that's just an important thing to keep in mind. Um, sometimes you'll see from fearful avoidance or anxious, preoccupied, like random calls from, you know, blocked numbers and they'll block their phone number and then call to just like hear how you're doing or hear what you're doing, like listen to your voice. You would be really surprised. Like I know we think when we hear this, like, oh, these are, you know, 18 or 19 year olds doing these things or like, I can tell you with certainty working with, you know, a lot of different individuals for years in my practice. Um, these are things that 55, 60 year olds do. Like these are things that people do after a divorce, after a, a divorce and then getting remarried or not even necessarily remarried, but back in a relationship and that relationship ending. This is something that people do because people have a hard time dealing with detachment and, and the breaking of relationships and you know we're wired for attachment so it makes sense so these things are generally people like if you're getting random calls it's probably that person okay showing up places that you would bump into them um gossiping asking about you to mutual friends these are all like the either the activating side of the fearful avoidant or the anxious so if this person has broken up with you and then they're doing this these are symptoms that this person is essentially ruminating okay um, fearful avoidance the most will try to reach out in like indirect ways. So through, you know, calls with a blocked number or things with like hidden vulnerability, um, or maybe through like a post of a song that you guys used to listen to together or a post of a place, you know, they'll do things to try to get you to comment. Um, whereas anxious will probably try to comment more directly. Fearful avoidance will try to do things that are like indirect, but still reaching out in all these different ways. And it tends to be quite consistent and frequent for that period of time. But remember, these windows close usually based on what the attachment style is. Dismissive avoidance, they tend to be a lot more like withdrawn. So you'll usually see them comfortable in the silence and withdrawing for quite some time. And then right around that window that we discussed earlier in the video, you might see that they start liking your social media posts. They will rarely reach out to you directly and be like, hey, how are you? Are you okay? Like that's something you'd see definitely more of the anxious and also the fearful avoidance doing, dismissive avoidance will do that the least. They tend to have the easiest time at going no contact, and it actually usually tends to help them the most at getting over the relationship, okay? Um, and social media posts, if they're doing that, that's like their way of staying safe, but also trying to reach out, okay? They also might, dismissive avoidance might try to um, do things as well, similar to some of the fearful avoidance stuff, which is like, post a song that you used to listen to, post a bunch of sad songs on social media in general. I can't tell you how many times I've heard stories like this where it's like, oh, I just missed a boy an ex, you know, posted sad songs on social media for like weeks or just went MIA completely, like used to be active and then just dropped off the face of the earth for, for, for a few weeks or right around the six month mark. And so, or sorry, right around the six week mark or, you know, eight week mark, this is more in that time frame that we were discussing, right? And so this, these are all signs that this person sort of withdrawing into themselves and they're in their shell and they're having a more difficult time. Um, but I would also say that dismissive avoidance are the least likely to reach out to you directly, even if they do so in sort of these vulnerable ways, or maybe they send you a meme or they say, hey, do you want to pick up your stuff? It's at my place. Like things like that are very dismissive avoidant. Like let me not be vulnerable at all, but let me try to touch base with you in super indirect ways where I don't have to feel vulnerable in the process at all, but I can like sort of assess you and see where you're at and maybe you'll sort of rekindle those feelings from you when you see me. They try to really put the ball in the other person's court. But what you will see if a dismissive warden is really interested is right around that six week to eight, eight week mark, if, if they, um, like you reach out to them and they light up or they answer right back or they try to extend the conversation when you do talk. Like these tend to be signs. Now, sometimes these are signs that the person just wants to be friends, but it's rare that a dismissive avoidant even wants to be friends after a relationship is over. So if they're extending and they're reaching out, they're probably missing you at least a little bit. And so you can sort of have a sign that, that no contact is working. So I can go into so much more information. There's so much more I can say about this topic because it's a broad topic and it's super is nuanced between different attachment styles. So let me know in the comments below. Um, if you want me to talk about that more, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys pretty much every day posting these videos to help support you during this um, quarantine sort of isolation time. And thank you so much for watching.